It's time to correct our spiral math review. We're going to do day one. This is for uh, Monday, March 23rd. Let's begin. Amy has four quarters, three nickels, and a half dollar. How much money does Amy have in all? In all means I'm gonna add it all together. I'm gonna start with four quarters. That's my magic number. I know four quarters is one dollar. I don't even have to count it because I already know that. But if you forgot, you are going to take 25 and you're going to add it four times. 25, 50, 75, 100. But try to remember four quarters automatically is one dollar. I'm going to write it as 100 cents since we're adding other money to it. And then we'll change it to dollars after. Okay, three nickels. A nickel is five cents. If I need three of them, I'm gonna count by fives three times. Five, 10, 15. Three nickels is 15 cents. A half dollar is 50 cents. And the article in front of it is A. That means I only have one half dollar. So 50 cents. Now I can add them all together. My ones place I get a five, my tens place I get a six, and my hundreds place I get a one. Now we can change it into dollars. I put a decimal point after the hundreds place and a dollar sign in front, a dollar and 65 cents. We need to write the digital time to match the clock. It is pointing at the six. I know it's not close to the next hour because my hand is not on this side of the clock. So it is already six o'clock, so six. And the minutes I start counting, this is zero, five, ten. So it is six, ten. For the baby, the baby woke up in the middle of the night. At what time? Okay. The hour hand is in between the three and the four. That means it's already past three o'clock, but it is not four o'clock yet. It is still three o'clock. Now for the minutes. Remember our trick? Six is how many minutes? You should know that that is 30 minutes already. Three is the 15, six is the 30, nine is the 45. If you know that, then that'll make it go much quicker for you. You can just say 30 plus five more, 35. If you forgot that, then you have to count all the way around and you'll still get the same answer. It'll just take you a little longer. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Now let's figure out if it's AM or PM. The clue was here in the middle of the night. So that means this is when you're usually still asleep. Okay, 12 o'clock noon, remember 12 p.m. is right when, at noon is lunchtime, right when it turns to be p.m. And then you usually stay in school until about three o'clock p.m. So 3.30 p.m. is usually, you're still awake, you've just left school, <laughs> most of you. Now 3.35 a.m., most of you are still asleep here. This you usually don't get up till about seven in the morning, six or seven in the morning. So this is before you wake up. So in the middle of the night, that's meaning when you're normally asleep, we're gonna circle AM here. On the next one, we need to draw a rectangle. Rectangles have four sides. And they are not all equal sides, okay? The, so two of them are gonna be longer than the other two. There's our rectangle. And on the last one, we need to partition the rectangle into three rows and columns. This is our brand new section here. We have not learned how to do this one yet. So let's see if you're able to figure this out. With rows, go side to side. These are rows, kind of like a row in church. Columns go up and down. 
Think about the White House. The White House has columns that go up and down. So if we have to make three rows, that means that we're talking about side to side. You draw one less line than there are rows. So I only need to draw two lines to make three rows. Now columns are up and down. Same thing, I need to draw one less line. So if I have two columns, I only need to draw one line going up and down. Now I have three rows, those are going side to side. One, two, three. And I have two columns, those are going up and down. One, two. So we can count our total number of boxes now. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six boxes when I partitioned this rectangle. Okay, you've now learned how to partition shapes. And oh, I didn't mention when we were partitioning, you want to try to get them as close to equal as possible. So um, I don't want to draw, let me show you up here. If I was splitting up this rectangle, I don't want one row to be this skinny, one to be super fat, and another one to be this skinny. You want to try to get them to be the same size, okay, as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want to see it like this. All right, now um, you know how to partition, and we'll see your spiral review on Friday, the whole sheet. You'll take a picture of it and you'll upload it for me.